Hey guys, this is us, um, John and Janae with Happily Ever After 4, and we're here for part two of how to save money for your Disney trip. We're gonna talk a little bit today about what you can do when you're in the park, of how to save money, things um, of those expenses that come up while you're there, after you've done all your preparing, after you've done all your saving, um, how can you continue to have a great trip? So, stick around. So we've talked about transportation from getting to your home to your destination, but most of the time when you're there at your destination, you're also going to need transportation. Um, if you're at Disneyland, I highly recommend finding a hotel within walking distance, which means you can park your car at the hotel, which check on those. Sometimes they charge you for parking, but there are hotels that don't charge for parking. You can leave your car there and then you can walk to and from the resort every day. Well, even the charge, those hotels that charge are cheaper than... That's uh, true. With the, uh, parking in the parking garage, although it's probably the coolest parking garage I've ever seen. It's like twenty-five dollars a day. It's, it's. I, think, I don't know. It's not cheap. Part I don't of it, think I've ever paid for it. It's always been wrapped up into an annual pass or something yeah. that we've had. Although we haven't had an annual pass. We haven't had that in a while. while, which is why we walk to and from. That's true. Um, but, and that's, unfortunately, Southern California parking is expensive pretty much everywhere. So when you can find places to kind of just let your car sit and then you can be able to walk lots of places. Um, one, you're working off all those calories of the stuff you're eating, but also you're able to save money on that because um, that can add up really quick. Mm -hmm. um, At Disney World, well, actually, that's not true though because that's ending. The, mag the Magical Express, Express is ending. Is Before ending. you used to be able to complimentary, they would pick you up from the uh, Orlando airport, take you to the park and then take you back. But that, resort, that yeah. ends at the, the first of the year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, but I think that that's extending. Uh, well, I, I take that back. It's not extending. The company that they use, Mirrors, is now, because they have the buses, are going to do essentially the same thing. But there's a charge. But I can't remember the prices that I saw. Um, they're actually not that bad. At least I didn't think they were. I mean, a lot cheaper than buying or renting a car for the whole time because one if you rent a car you have to pay for the car the whole time and? two they charge parking at the not only at the the um the uh the parks but they also charge at the resorts mm -hmm. um so you know if you could take the bus and then um stay there and use the the transportation, Disney's transportation from your resort to the parks. Mm -hmm. I mean... If you're going to stay on property, I highly recommend using their transportation within themselves. Mm -hmm. They are uh, bus schedules from every resort, every park, including the two water parks and downtown Disney running... It's at uh, Disney Springs. Dang it. Disney Springs. <laughs> Between Disney Springs, the water parks, um, the resorts, and the actual um, parks themselves. Mm -hmm. Pretty much like... 20 hours a day maybe they start like they start an hour before park opens yeah i think it's earlier than that because there are some places where That's breakfast true. i can't remember the exact time but it starts start really early later. and it ends pretty late ends about an hour after parks close I, mm -hmm. and I don't think they're gonna leave anybody stranded but. no no they're not and they always have cast members there at um bus stops and things to help you to make sure that you get to where you need to go mm. um but they usually come about every 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're going to use that, I would allot about an hour from when you leave your room to be able to get to park entrance or wherever you want to go just because of traffic, waiting for buses, walking, going through security and different things like that. But it's definitely doable and it, and it makes it so that you don't have to worry about vehicles, gas and all those different things mm -hmm. like that. And so that's one way to almost entirely cut out your transportation expense when you're at your destination. So you have your your main things that are gonna take um, most of your budget, um, your transportation, um, hotel reservations, um, park tickets and reservations, and then your food. Um, so there's a few things that we do to help kind of regulate that food budget when we're in the parks. Yeah, so we take all of our drinks in. Drinks in the park are ridiculously expensive. Yeah, they are, they are crazy. I, I'm pretty sure that it's almost like at a counter service for a soda is almost like four bucks. Yeah, it's almost the same price for a churro and a large soda. Like, yeah, it's 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 pretty expensive. And so what we do is we like to get like the six pack bottles of Coke Zero 
Um, for water or Powerade or whatever. Yeah, but I mean, it's way cheaper. For the price of one soda, we can get a six pack. It's, it's crazy, yeah. So we take those in and then we just ask for cups of ice mm -hmm. at the um, counter when we're getting our food. And then so that, you know, that helps. Uh, same thing with the kids. Um, we bring drinks in. We bring snacks in for them as well. Like they still get a treat while we're there. But um, bring applesauces and fruit snacks and like crackers, crackers and, and, and stuff like that. So that, you know. Especially when you're waiting in line and, mm -hmm. oh, here's a snack to tide us over or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so one of the other things that we do uh, is we eat uh, most of the time, unless we have a, a table reservation for breakfast or like something special we want to try um, that's new or a limited, uh, is we eat our breakfast at the resort. Yeah, like in our room before we leave. Yeah, so that um, depends. Like at, at Disneyland, we can obviously bring our food. Mm -hmm. At Disney World, we would do or do like an Amazon order um, that they could deliver Amazon to your, now, I Amazon now. Amazon now, yeah. Uh, to your, they have other different grocers that, that do that type of stuff. As well. um, so they can bring uh, the food that you want. And I guess that goes back to at Disney World when we bring in our drinks is because we have those delivered to us. Um, so you don't need a car to go pick them up. Mm -hmm. They can bring them to the resort and then you can have to bring them in with you. Yeah. And so breakfast, if you can eat breakfast at your resort and you could bring your drinks into the park, that that's a game changer on saving money. It, like it's ridiculous really how much it'll save you. It, it'll cut your cost in and, like, yeah. by like a third. And then that's just extra money you can spend on all the like, awesome treats because I'm not a huge breakfast fan. I think you're more of a breakfast fan than I am, but breakfast meal, you have your standards, you know, your pancakes and your eggs and your, your meats and stuff. And most of the counters inside the parks have the same menu. Mickey pancakes sounds pretty good right now. Make, make you waffles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true, but they, it's, it's very similar. When you get into your lunches and your dinners, um, your range is much wider, um, but there's only like two or three different counters in a park that'll serve breakfast food. Yeah, there's not a ton. And but they have a lot at the resorts. They do have a lot of the resorts. All the counters and all the resorts will have breakfast food for you. Um, but it's a very different experience from your other two meals. And so, um, I mean, look into it. If, if you're a breakfast person, see if that's something that you want to do. But for well, us, yeah, then you could even, you can go have breakfast and then maybe you are snacking throughout the day and then you have a... A uh, counter dinner. That's true. If you have a heavier breakfast, um, maybe not so much a lunch and then a dinner, mm -hmm. um, which goes back to when we've done tables, which we love tables, the right kind of tables, but I would space them out. I would not do tables every day at all. Oh, no. It's just so much food and then you end up wasting food to your next one. In fact, if you're going to do a dinner, I would not do a breakfast the next day. Or if you have a breakfast one day, I would not do dinner the same day. I would I would space them out. You get Ohana full. Then you get Ohana full. <laughs> oh man. Um, but, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. That is, and then also what we do is uh, when we eat at counters, we share a meal. Mm -hmm. um, the two of us. The, yeah, not well, the kids. No. But, because there's typically a lot cheaper, but for us, like we share a meal. One, the proportion sizes that you get, I mean, they're they're good proportions. They're not they're what decent. you eat at home. I mean, they're, they're gonna, they'll fill you up, like mm -hmm. really good. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll find something that we like, we'll split it, sometimes order another side with it. Um, you know, if, if we're feeling hungry or if we don't think it's quite going to fill us up, um, or we just eat that and then we get a churro or some sort of a pretzel or a snack or something at mm -hmm. the next point. Um, and half the time we end up finishing with the kids don't eat anyway. No, that's true. Um, so you do all that and am I like, like, Super full? No. But am I hungry? No. And when you do that, then like you said, you can have more of those treats. Like if you're in Epcot and it's a festival, which is almost year round, you want to be able to go and try one of those things. You want to be able to get um, a special holiday churro or treat that they have. Um, you want to be able to get... No, you don't want to get a special churro. The classic churro is the best. Okay, yes. I, I don't eat any, any other thing. I don't think I've ever had a different churro. Oh. We got the gold churros one time, I think. 
the point is there's always fun stuff to try even if you're a regular park goer they always have new stuff they always have different things and you want to be able to try that and if you're full it's not as fun and so that's true you eat less then yeah. you can be able to experience some of those more and then you can get one of those and then you share that between the two of you um and you can kind of just go that way i when we first got married our honeymoon um was our first trip to disney world together we'd been separate before we were on the dining plan um because uh, they had a promotion at the time and we were splurging because yeah, it was so. our honeymoon and the dining plan is great they have it set up in lots of different ways but you were able to go um your food's prepaid. You already much. paid for it's, it. It's prepaid. Or depending on the time of year and the promotion, it's included in your package. But anyway, you go and we both got full entrees and desserts with... And it was just so much food. We got like two of them a day. No, one a day and then a table credit a day. A counter and it was so much food. Too much. It, after a couple of days, I was throwing away half my food every time. It was delicious. I just couldn't eat it all. I wasn't used to eating that heavy. Especially because most of us, before we're going on a trip, we're trying to like, you know, look our best. Well, not only that, but because I had been multiple times, I knew like the good places to go. So and every place we went was to fabulous. Every place. Yeah. It was like the top 10% yeah. was the only thing that we went because it was all vetted. <laughs> so, so that causes problems because then you're just, you're just wasting food. And then that's frustrating when you pay that much for food and then you have to throw it away. Um, it is pricier, but I don't complain about it because... I understand the quality and I'm not wasting any of it. So I, I pay it and, and I'm comfortable with it because I know I'm gonna enjoy it and I'm not gonna throw any of it away. And like I said, it's always better to just go and buy more than to go, crap, we bought too much, mm -hmm. which we've done before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. something that I didn't understand, um, we can talk about a little bit briefly here. Um, if you're a regular Disney traveler, then it, it might seem second nature to you. But I've had conversations with people and I kind of get that blank stare and I have to go, Oh wait, let's explain this for a minute. Um, when you're talking about dining, you have counter services and table services and snacks. So if you're gonna be doing a dining plan, that's how it's um, split up for you and that's their lingo and that's kind of differentiates the price. So a table is a sit down where they have a waiter that, that serves brings you. food a at your table. Counter is a, like a window. It's a restaurant, but it's got, you go up to a counter and a, or and a window and they give you your food over you the go, counter and, and you go find yeah, somewhere else to And get. snacks are things that you get at kiosks or um, your cart, your, your treat, yeah. display counter, yeah. um, maybe at the ice cream shop, different mm -hmm. things like that. Um, they have obviously the general price range, but that's kind of how those are calculated. So um, when you're looking things up and you're asking those questions online in those different forums, that's what they mean um, by those types of differentiations. Um, similarly, there's differentiations in the level of resort that you that you can uh, book. Yeah, so they have deluxe, moderate, and value. And I mean, it speaks for itself, right? <laughs> so deluxe is the top of, of the tier. Like you're talking- Cream of the crop. You're talking, uh, you're, you're averaging five to six, uh, just an average for a year would be like five to $600 a night. Um, at a deluxe resort, like, pff, trust me, the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian, like, Animal they're, Kingdom they're Lodge, contemporary, way nice, uh, like, the Grand California, yeah, some of the nice resorts you ever stay in, but they're gonna cost you, mm -hmm. um, and then they have moderates, uh, which, you know, I would say on average is probably about two to three hundred dollars a night, um, which and they're a little bit bigger. They have a little bit less amenities, but yeah, they don't have like the huge like deluxe have like the really big um, like when you walk in, what do they call it? Like it's it's like the movie style where it's like this huge atrium and it just yeah. the theming is out of this world and it's great and you have the piano player who's playing the ambiance music and you have um, the really fancy check-in counters. I mean, it's. Yeah. It looks way cool. Yeah, they got concierge, mm -hmm. you know, and all that Bell kind of hops stuff. and all those things yeah. right there. You you really do get great service. But so but moderates they don't have as big of a an atrium. It's not called atrium. What's it called? Lobby. Lobby, that's right. Um but I mean they're still they're still pretty nice. Like mm -hmm. we liked uh Coronado Springs. Yes. Coronado Springs there. is nice. That's um, probably our favorite moderate. Mm -hmm. We also stayed at Caribbean Beach. Yeah, I didn't like it, please. But it was under construction. It was under construction. They so were remodeling stuff and building a DVC resort, were... so there was a lot of change. 
Um, well, it was cheap. That's why we stayed. It yeah, was only for like one night because we was. tacked it on it. But so that so that moderate, and then you have value, which um, it's it's <laughs> more like a hundred bucks a night. Uh, between a hundred to two hundred, depending on time the of time year. of year. Um, Your value resorts are usually the ones when they have deals and packages where they say save up to 40% or or when they tack in free dining. Those usually come with a value resort mm -hmm. reservation. Yeah, and some are better than others, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the theming is really cool. Or, or the... Art of animation. Art of animation are nice. Uh, the the all-stars I wouldn't go to. That's probably lowest that's, on my list. Yeah. Um, Personal preference. But it, it's cheaper. So I mean that that's that gives you an idea of how you can um, save on 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 those places. They also have uh, what is it? The all the deluxe um, resorts have DVC, and that's yes. Disney Vacation Club for mm -hmm. people who have bought into it and use points to stay there, or you can rent those points. And so and that's a great if you want to stay at one of those places and you're not a DVC member or you don't want to pay six hundred dollars a night. Renting DVC points is your best way to, to go to stay at those places. Because you get all the perks of being a DVC member, which there's, it's, it's worth it, definitely worth it. Um, but you're not paying that ticket price that mm -hmm. everybody else does. Yeah. And those um, deluxe resorts, they all have the spas, they all have mm -hmm. the, the table services that you want to go to. There's the destination ones where you want to go and check out the resort and see everything. They've got the really cool pools and um, like the Grand Floridian has Narcoosies, one of our favorite yeah. um, places to yep. eat. Polynesian has Ohana. Mm -hmm. Polynesian has Ohana. Um, let's see, Wilderness Lodge has Whispering Canyon. Mm -hmm. um, the Contemporary has a California Grill. See, this is the thing. So now we got to make a video about like all the, the, the best places <laughs> to stay there and where to eat. That's true. Um, but your moderates, they don't have the tables. Maybe a couple uh, here and there. They, some of them do, but not the ones that you... I mean, not the... Not the ones you save up for and you, you make a point to go to, in my opinion. Yeah, I guess that's um, true. And then your values don't have any tables. They all have counter services. Mm -hmm. They all have places where you can buy food. Absolutely. Um, but your deluxe ones, because they have DVC, they also have little convenience stores with like your fresh products, your frozen foods. Because most of the DVC rooms have at least a kitchenette, at least um, a little bit more than what just a... a a refrigerator. You've mm -hmm. got, you know, cabinets and you've got a sink and you've got all those things. Um, and that's your basic level room. As you get higher up, you have full kitchens. And so they have places where you can buy food too. Um, something else uh, for planning your trip is to take a look at what they have and think about what you're going to want to do. Um, we always look at different tables, different counter services. We look at menus. We kind of have an idea of what we want to eat, what we want to experience, and we price those together so we can get an idea about how much money we need to budget for food or experiences each day. We've done it so much that we kind of just know. For us and our family of four, we budget between 70 to $90 a day in food, um, which obviously can fluctuate per park, per time of year. Um, and, and you could do it cheaper. And you could do it to your right. That's mean, that's with us being very liberal about what what we buy. Yeah, but you could do it cheaper. You could do it cheaper. Um, you could bring in more food. You could mm -hmm. share more um, meals. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, but we budget it that way because we want to be able to experience. We want a vacation like that. Yeah. And so we plan ahead to mm -hmm. have a vacation like that. Um, but that's why I said go look at all those prices. Look at those things. Look at um, the party that you're traveling with. How. Um, if you're dividing up funds between different families that you're traveling with, if you have, you know, X amount of kids and their different eating habits. Um, another reason, I've had people tell me like, because we love the food, and it's like, oh, you're going to have to try the food. And then they go and they're like, I was so disappointed, the food wasn't good. I'm like, what are you talking about the food wasn't good? He's like, well, we were here and we were so hungry and there wasn't anything. This is just what the kids got and so we ended up getting here. And I'm like, you went to the first place that you saw. Yeah. like. Like if you look ahead of time, then you're going to know like, oh, I want to be in this place and this place for these times of the day because those are the food I want to try. Or my son is very picky on what he eats. He pretty much eats bread and mac and cheese. So we look ahead of time to know which restaurants offer mac and cheese, which restaurants offer something that he's going to like. So at noon, when we're all getting hangry, we know exactly where we want to go. Did you say hangry? I did say hangry. Because we get cranky when we're ha hungry. I don't like that. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So... When it's lunchtime or mealtime and we're hot and we're tired and we're hungry, 
we know where we're gonna go and we're not trying to make that decision um, when we're getting impatient. So that's another perk to that as well. well I think that, I think mobile ordering's helped with that. That's true, mobile Because you could be on the other end of the park and want to eat somewhere and then just put it in mm -hmm. and then instead of having to be there. That's true. And I'm not giving excuses as to like no. how you can get around that. No, no, no. but, but that, that it has help helped. With like mood and temperament because you're going to wait for your food for 10 to 15 minutes and might as well have that be while you're walking. Oh, I saw this thing where it said that I think it just started mm -hmm. or it's about to start. Anyways, you're going to be able to order mobile order from uh, like the confectionery uh, and oh. the candy palace or um, what's the one at downtown Disney? Mar Mar Marceline's. Marceline's. Um, oh, the tree counters. Yeah, so you'd be able that's to big. mobile order that in, instead of having to... Oh, that's a game changer. <laughs> um, Marceline's... It's a money on, changer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is, right? Uh, Marceline's on downtown Disney in Anaheim. Um, at the end of the night, it's so crazy. And I, get, I think probably some of the other ones do this too, but we're always there at the end of the night on our way out. Well, there, there reminds me of how when... Because you, you're like, it's so busy at the end of the night. And how it's the... The people who complain oh. about being in traffic, it's like, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm like, no, you are traffic. You are part right. of the traffic. You are part of the reason why it's That's like true. this. So it's like, at the end of the night, it's just so busy. It's like, yeah, but you're but the... I'm, I'm there But you're the busy. Be busy. Because I so want you can't complain about, about it. That's true. But what they it do is. is you have, when you walk in, you have to pull a number and then you have to wait for your number um, to be able to go up to the windows and get what you need to get. And so if you can mobile order, then you're not like... Oh yeah. Crowded like as we're the, the, the as we're walking camera. out the night, and the we can do. mobile order that, and then just get there, pick it up, and go. Man. It's the best thing in the world to do. So amazing that everybody else does it, and so to be able to avoid some of that is is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. We've had so much fun telling you about some of the ways that we save and the ways that we plan so that we can be able to have a good trip and not be so worried about that uh, dollar amount at the end of the trip. I think that's one of the worst things is when you're there on your vacation, you're trying to have this great time and create all these great family memories and you're just constantly worried about that that price tag at the end. And so these are some things that we've done so that we don't have to worry about that price tag and it just enhances our vacation so much. So thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any more questions, things that we can help you with to help save you money or experiences that you've had that you think are worth the money, things that you think aren't worth the money. We're here to help. We love talking about Disney. So please like, subscribe, and let us know how we can help you have a great trip. Bye.